not Christian. It doesn't seem to be. It doesn't seem to matter particularly. But I've noticed that those that have a root of bitterness end up having um, a lot of problems. I'm not going to really get into the problems. I've been told or read or both actually that bitterness can be a root of cancer, it can be a root of arthritis, root of arthritis, can be a root of other a lot of other things. And uh and I can see that root of bitterness is clearly that root gets a little tiny like I don't know what the word would be, like almost a toothpick, but not even a toothpick. And it sticks it into our heart as an offense. If that offense isn't dealt with, it's like taking a cutting off of a shrub of some sort, putting it in a fertile soil. having special ingredients that you put on that soil and it just it grows and it grows and it grows and it grows until it takes over our whole heart it's really hard it seems for some people to get rid of the root of bitterness because of how much their hearts are engulfed in this thing because they've been carrying it for so many years. Somebody did something. Somebody said something. Somebody hurt them. The Bible says, guard your heart, for from it are all the wellsprings of life. Guard your heart. But what about those people that didn't guard their heart? What about all those people that have those roots of bitterness that have engulfed their heart, then what? I thought of Cain in the Bible. When he gave his offering to God, the Lord rejected his offering. And the Lord warned him that that the devil is at your door. And it will over sin will overtake you if you don't deal with it. And he did. And it overtook him. And ultimately the result of that was that he killed his brother Abel and he lost his life. He was a fugitive for the rest of his life. Because he didn't master that sin. That one sin of jealousy more than likely it caused him to kill his brother because his brother's offering was okay but his wasn't and I always wondered why was his offering okay I mean what did he give but I don't think it was what he gave I think it was how he gave it now there's no word in the Bible that says that's the truth but again it's about how we give the Bible says if we have a problem with our brother that we should make up with our brother first before we give an offering. Had he had a fight with his brother? Was there jealousy there that caused him to just say, well, I'm going to give something that's way better than you. God's going to love me more than he loves you. Your, your, your stuff just isn't so special. You know, I'm more special. I should be noticed more. Isn't that what the devil said? Like I said, it's not biblical. And I'm not trying to add anything to the Bible. It's just an understanding that when we have a bad attitude, and there's a problem with our heart, God will warn us that we need to, like, take care of that attitude. And uh, if 
we don't take care of it, they can take over our lives. It can prevent us from having the destiny that was planned for us by God. Now, people can say, well, you have to forgive and you don't understand and da-da-da. You know, Jesus was very, very, very compassionate. He was the most compassionate of all. He died for us. But he warned the Pharisees because of the hardness of their heart. And the hardness of their heart came about because of their bitterness, because of their jealousy, because of their sense of self-importance, which was so important, they considered themselves more important and what they wanted and what they needed more important than Jesus himself. I've seen people struggle with the hardness of their heart. And I haven't seen good consequences come of it. And I asked the Lord this morning, I said, God, how can this get fixed? What can, what can I do to pray for some of these people that have bitter roots that I see because you have given me the eyes to see them? Because you've given me the eyes to see what you reveal want to heal as I am told frequently so if that's true then what can be done you don't force anybody to get rid of their bitterness you didn't force pain told him, he told him to pay attention, that this thing was there, and then in the New Testament, there was a man that was a sorcerer that wanted to buy the anointing of God, and he was warned that there was something wrong with him. He had a bad attitude. That there was, he wanted a claim for himself and not a claim for Jesus. Ananias and Sapphira were struck dead. Maybe because they too wanted to make a name for themselves. But God knew the truth. He knew the reason why they held back their money. It wasn't that they didn't give, but how did they give? They were lying. They were saying they were doing one thing, but they were really doing something else. That's what they that's what they were told. You have tried to lie to the Holy Spirit, not to man can't lie to God. None of us can lie to God. He knows our motives. He knows if we are angry, if we are bitter, if we are resentful, if we are prideful, if we are arrogant, if we are jealous, if we are self-righteous. If we have any of those qualities that align ourselves with Lucifer when he was cast out of heaven. If we have those qualities, how can we expect to be doing what God calls us to do? How can we expect anything but tribulation? How can we expect anything but oppression? oppression? If we think we know more than other people, someone recently had said to me, 
I thank you, God, for that revealing. I thank you, God, that you can send your angels right now to stay with these individuals along the path that is required for that root to get fully extricated. It's a delicate surgery, a painful surgery. dangerous surgery. Whenever we're dealing with a problem with the heart, it's a delicate, dangerous surgery. But God, you are gentle, you are kind, and you can help whoever is listening that wants the help to get through it. And I believe that you will. So for everyone that's listening, I thank God for you, for listening, for being able to relinquish those things that are roots that are causing pain in your life, in the life of your family, even in the life of your co-workers, in the life of your friends, most importantly, in your life, in your relationship with the Lord. Jesus is good. He died so that that root would die. I plead the blood of Jesus over you. And as always, I plead the blood of Jesus over myself. Because without him, I know I can't do nothing. Be blessed.